very happy um, that Mr. Bernd Gross joined us today from Software AG. Um, he is um, yeah, the expert for, not only the expert, but also the head of um, the IoT platform that Software AG is offering. We talked about Cumulosity, gave you some readings about Cumulosity um, as, plan as planning ahead for today. Um, so without further ado, um, I'm very happy um, that you joined us here in presence for uh, a short overview of where Cumul Cumulosity is actually heading and what your current challenges are. And um, please um, share your insights. So thank you very much for having me. Um, thank you for your interest in the uh, platform technology. I believe I'm a I'm platform-driven person by heart. You know, that has been also the reason why I was one of the co-founders of Cumulosity in 2012. Actually, Cumulosity is a startup from Düsseldorf, a software startup from Düsseldorf, and we uh, created the idea of the Cumulosity platform in California, and actually in the Bay Area, in Silicon Valley, in Mountain View where I was working for a few years uh, as, uh, in a software business. Um, and by the way, I'm uh, actually an engineer by background, um, but I also did uh, an MBA, a Master of Business Administration in London at London Business School. So I'm a bit, uh, a bit like a, a similar combination as you are, if I understand right. You have an economic and a, a bit of a technical background, and I think that's exactly uh, the right choice. That's what is needed. Um, uh, you know, from my personal experience, I can tell you the generic uh, management roles are becoming less and less uh, uh, important uh, because software and intelligence on software and other toolings will actually overcome uh, generic management capabilities. What is becoming very important is a hybrid, uh, an understanding of a specific content or technology plus uh, the business impact related to it. For example, like the platform economy is exactly like this type of a hybrid in my point of view. It's not just a generic, uh, you know, economic understanding of the business. Okay, so that is um, uh, uh, my uh, quick introduction. So I'm in software since 25 years. I mentioned it, working abroad for over 10 years, then co-founded Comolosity. And Comolosity, actually, why I'm now here as the chief technology of a software AG, is that uh, Software AG acquired Comolosity uh, a few years ago. So we basically, in Comolosity, we selected an exit strategy as a startup. Uh, we have been venture capital funded. And then, uh, you know, after five years, we selected Software AG to be our exit partner. Uh, what does that mean, exit partner? It means basically that you, as a startup, think, how can you grow your business? How can you, you know, further stimulate growth? We were growing about 100% uh, on the annual recurring revenue level, so quite well. But then we decided that if we, we, we need a strong partner to actually uh, you know, make most of our um, advantages, we have been very early in the market for IoT platforms, really created a good momentum, but building up um, you know, an own organization globally, uh, I personally perceive that as very tough, especially in the B2B segment. It's different in B2C, platforms, yeah, because that's you can advertise users directly through uh, digital means, digital marketing, uh, you know, lend and expand, etc. But in the, in the B2B segment, it's very challenging because it requires you to have an enterprise sales team which interacts with your customers globally. And uh, when we first realized that our technology is uh, sort of a unique um, I remember very well a small, <laughs> small anecdote here that we have actually a client from Australia who wanted to buy our technology. They looked at it, they found it, uh, they, they tested it, you know, and they did, uh, you know, trials with it. Actually, the company was is called Telstra, it's one of the largest telecommunication providers in Australia. And actually, they, they gave me a call and I was saying, listen, we want your technology. Can you please tell us who is working in our region to support your technology? So I had then to confess, so sorry, we have no one in Australia and no one in Asia. So they, oh, we didn't know that. So the they conversation stopped. But uh, a few days later, the guy gave me a call back and said, listen, you know what? We're still interested in your technology. Um, can we come over to Düsseldorf and visit you? I was saying, yeah, sure, no problem, come over. So they came over with a few people and uh, a week later they signed the contract. So that was the first time for me that I realized, hey, we have something here in our hands which is attractive for the global market. And at the same time I had Software AG asking, hey, should we partner up? Should we acquire you to 
globalize your business. And at the end of the day, what happened then is uh, we, we teamed up, and maybe I'm actually um, showing you uh, uh, one of the outcomes there. Uh, is actually that the reason when we did agree to team up with SoftwareG, which is the second largest software provider in Germany, 5,000 people, we are active in 70 countries, we were able to manage to actually scale up our business. And it's not so well known because it's a B2B, very specific uh, you know, business we are doing. We are not the consumer brand as such, as Software G or nor Cumulosity. But because of this partnership, because of this uh, collaboration, we were able to globally build um, uh, you know, an environment which is actually uh, one of the leading um, platforms, IoT platforms. Uh, today, globally leading. It's, as I mentioned to you, it's not so well known, it's a very specific con uh, co uh, concept. But here are um, examples of what very, very important industry analysts telling about us. Why are, in, in, again, in the B2B context, these analysts make, they are the kingmakers, right? If they say you are not good, you have a problem globally in your sales. If they say you are good, you have actually an enormous amount of opportunities because a lot of companies come to you and want to talk to you. So most of the people in our customer base, uh, they look at analyst reports in order to evaluate their technology choices for specific problems. And the global leading analyst company is Gartner by far. It's a global leading analyst company. I think 30,000 people working in that analyst company for technology analysts to advise enterprises globally. And this analyst is saying that we with Cumulosity, the software G slash Cumulosity, we are at the leader's quadrant. So the, you want to be on the top right side here in this, in this uh, uh, quadrant. I don't know, are you using Gartner or are quadrants, hype, hype cycle, and also these, uh, uh, okay, magic quadrants. And that's a good position for us. As you see, there are also others like Microsoft and PTC and the Amazon Web Services, Siemens with their MindSphere uh, concept is there, uh, which is, by the way, uh, under the hood of MindSphere's Cumulosity as an OEM technology as part of our partnership with Siemens. Yeah. Uh, but uh, then also Forrester, the second biggest and most important uh, analyst, is saying actually, it, I like that even more. I like the left one more than the right one because that puts us on the, on the top right corner as the only one. And it's quite, uh, you know, um, for a European software, B2B software vendor, um, we are very, actually we're very proud of that position because it's not so common. Most of the quadrants you will see a lot of American companies, obviously, software companies from the Silicon Valley, from the Bay Area, and in that way. So, but as a consequence, just to sum up my introduction, uh, deciding to uh, partner up or to sell the technology, our company, to Software AG and, and partner with Software AG really enabled this. Enabled a massive growth with, you know, over, um, you know, hundreds, uh, 550 or over uh, almost 600 customers globally using our IoT platform, uh, you know, with millions and millions of uh, connected things and devices. I will come to that later on. And it really uh, uh, ensured a massive growth for our business. Yeah. So, so that's a quick intro on that uh, platform and, uh, and the growth. So what I wanted also uh, before going into this uh, mega trend, uh, a connected world which is around us, I wanted to um, uh, you know, give you a bit more uh, tangible uh, use case examples. What can you do? Because uh, you know, a platform, if you don't have use cases, if you don't have applications running on the platform, it's useless. It doesn't help you. The times are over that you kind of create platforms just with an API structure and think someone is using that in order to innovate and utilize it. That's not anymore happening like this. Yeah? So what you really have to do is when you introduce a platform, you need to create a two-sided platform strategy, something you probably have been talking about. And that's really the key. You need to create value add for the platform, 
before you can open up the platform, because you need to have traffic on the platform. You need to have, you need to create a, a kind of an ecosystem with traffic, with usage, before it makes sense for others to join you. Yeah? And um, in the IoT space, it's actually, how to put it, it's actually, I would say, even a, a bit more complicated. Because what you have in reality, you have two ecosystems. You have an ecosystem below the platform, towards the world, towards the things, to the physical world, like a, you want to connect a car or a, a, an elevator, a wind turbine or a, a bus or w whatever. So you need to co coordinate that kind of ecosystem. And then on top, for the applications, for the uh, solutions, you need to have an ecosystem there as well. So in a sense, in order to, to stimulate other companies to join you, you really have to invest a lot in order to make uh, it useful. Yeah? So today, for example, when, uh, 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 let's say, a device partner comes to us, we have about 150 different device partners globally. Device partners are like a, a, a gateway partner who's able to connect a machine in an industry area, like say over an interface called OPC way. So you connect the machine and then you can actually trans transfer the data into the cloud to do analytics in the cloud with the platform. And these device partners, they only come to you if they know there is business opportunities for them to sell their devices to different machine makers, for example. Yeah? And so that's kind of what I meant. You need this kind of a, a snow, snowball effect, in a sense, in order to make an ecosystem work. And that's also why it's important to gain speed. If we wouldn't have joined with SoftEdge, maybe we would have achieved the same in five years from now, but I'm not sure if we would have had the time to do that. So and today, we see a lot of traction for our ecosystem, a lot of companies coming to us who want to work with us because we have this massive amount of customer base and the low workload and the business opportunity for them to use our platform ecosystem. So a few examples. Um, first, on the left, actually, I'm very, uh, very happy to announce that we are uh, sponsoring and, and partnering the era of uh, electric uh, uh, race um, agency. That's a new series, a new uh, racing series, which starts uh, in May in Turkey, in Istanbul, and will have actually six races in Europe. And it's the first uh, uh, fully electric, open uh, racing uh, contest. Open means, and um, the idea of that is to uh, democratize racing not just from a um, gender diversity point of view, so you have a lot of female racing drivers on this uh, series, but also from an economic point of view. So you can actually um, rent your racing cars. So it's kind of very affordable to join electric racing with this type of series. And I think that fits very well to software AG. We want to be very open and a very um, uh, uh, diverse, uh, uh, stimulate uh, uh, you know integration and diversity, and this racing agents uh, racing series fits very well. So we just uh, we launched uh, a few days ago our partnership with that series, and what they are doing with this car is, of course, they they're analyzing it. For that, they need the technology to analyze it. So these electric racing cars um, are monitored in real time. Um, the driving behavior is monitored, the, the usage of uh, the, the steering wheel, for example, the acceleration, the, uh, we can even monitor the, the uh, profile of the wheels. Yeah? So the whole car, in a way, is created as a, you could say, a digital twin, and you can, in, in real time, uh, make decisions for the driver, for the racer, for the racing car driver, but also for the team uh, supporting this car. So it's really a nice use case for us to utilize our technology to get uh, at a really very, um, let's say, performance related um, uh, uh, analysis. Then we have uh, another example. Um, I took that from, uh, from London uh, to reduce emissions. Uh, by the way, all these examples are somehow related to our ESG agenda, so uh, environmental, social, and government uh, uh, agenda which I took with, uh, with me. And here we are actually monitoring the, the iconic uh, London bus. Um, 
uh, and analyze, uh, as you probably know from visiting London, you know, in the summertime, they are quite uh, noisy and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, the, the old engines, uh, they are really um, creating a lot of pollution in, uh, in London. And what, what we did is, um, uh, we kind of uh, analyzing the outcome, the pollution outcome, and we have, you know, they have actually upgraded new filter systems, but they are uh, very sensitive and we are in, uh, in real time monitoring the buses and identifying issues and sending, and then the system actually who's uh, monitoring it, sending it's uh, sending actually on spot uh, repair teams and maintenance teams. So. Uh, into the city to uh, ensure a reduction of pollution. It's very important for the mayor of London. So they are, it's kind of a showcase project how he helps uh, to improve quality of life in London. Then the next one is wind farm. They are very, um, you know, we are uh, one of the global leaders in, uh, in analyzing wind farms. So they are connected monitored, the maintenance is done through the technology, you do predictive maintenance with it, so, so you know exactly when to go to which wind turbine and repair it before it breaks, so you kind of ensure it continuously runs. But also we do um, benchmarking of wind turbines. Um, there's a project um, at, the, at the moment ongoing where you can actually uh, you know, ask questions like if the wind turbine uh, in one wind farm, you have two or three wind turbines next to each other. This one is producing more energy than the others. What's the reason behind it? And then you can actually even tilt remotely from the cloud platform the rotor blades in order to optimize the energy production. So there's really some uh, a lot of innovations happening also on uh, many other areas, but it's a uh, it's of course a, a use case again, which is important for us in order to promote our technology or platform technology. So that's the underlying strategy here is really making our technology as, as much used as possible so that we have an attractive ecosystem behind it. And, and that's the only way to do it is through these use cases, through these applications. And um, another uh, example is uh, uh, something we do in Australia. You know, it's Australia is a uh, water is a, uh, is a big issue nowadays in Australia. There's a lot of wa water leakage in the, uh, in the network and we do um, real-time uh, water management. For example, here one is uh, Basilton water and you can imagine um, with, your, with that uh, massive, uh, huge, uh, large country, often water leakage is, is not discovered. It takes sometimes weeks before you understand you have a leakage. So millions of liters of uh, water is lost. And now what we do is we completely manage um, and, uh, in real time and, 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 and analyze the water um, uh, distribution. Then um, we uh, analyze the, the, together with Stanley Black & Decker. Uh, probably from some of you know Black & Decker as a consumer product for, for household tools. Uh, and Stanley Black & Decker is, uh, is the, the, the mother company. And here we are doing, uh, um, analyzing solar uh, power plants and, and uh, also the, the, in this specific case they are related to water pumps uh, so you don't need electricity grid. Um, uh, this particular case, it looks now very green here, actually is, is used a lot in India. Uh, where you don't have electricity in, uh, in the farming areas, uh, but still the, the water pump systems are needed. So we are using the combination and then monitoring, managing and, and uh, uh, informing the farmers on the, on the situation of, for their pumps. Yeah, then uh, there's of course, uh, we have tons, we have mass, many different use cases on the, on the uh, energy side uh, for, for uh, industrial uh, production. It's a hot topic. Energy optimization, energy cost reduction, as you can imagine, it's a big topic, it's a big driver for our technology, for our software. Monitoring uh, in real time energy consumption, identifying energy, uh, uh, key energy, uh, uh, let's say producers and optimizing the usage of that is a big, big topic. And our software can um, 
can help here. And I understood also you had other moss, uh, have they been visiting also and speaking? Oh, yeah. Okay, because Adamos and, uh, is, a, is a joint venture we are active in as Software AG. We are one of the joint venture partners of Adamos. It's the machinery uh, platform provider and they're utilizing then the uh, Cumulosity IoT platform uh, to offer their services to the machine makers. Uh, for example, DMG Mori, Dürer, Carl Zeiss, Engel, Maya. These are all these kind of, uh, what you call these hidden champions. They're leading in their domain globally, but they're typically not well known, they're not consumer brands, that they are using our technology to offer digital services on top of their machines and robots. Yeah. So these are a couple of um, examples on these um, use cases. But now I um, would like an introduction of Cumulosity and why we teamed up with Software AG. And now I would like to go to the um, topic of the connected world. And um, I know that um, uh, it's, all, it's all around us. Let me, let me maybe give you some um, more or less consumer related use cases, what we have in mind here. Um, for example, last week I was in Antwerp uh, in, in the Netherlands. And uh, what, uh, usually how, how these, these trips are booked is that my assistant is contacting a, a, a travel agency which works for our company and she then, the travel agency uh, is, all of, uh, is organizing the transportation, the hotel uh, and everything else. Um, still, what I have to do is, um, for example, I, when you arrive at the hotel, you still have to check in, right, in today's world. You are queuing in the business world, in the business hotel, you're arriving in the evening, you're queuing in a long queue to check in. Same happens in the morning when you book out. You know, when you check out after breakfast, you're again queuing. And, and you know, that's for me a broken customer experience. What's going to happen in the connected world, this experience will completely change. Because when we inform the travel agents already. They know my name, they know my password, they know my credit card, they have everything they need. So what the new experience, what's going to happen then is that you are actually arriving at the hotel, you have your key on your phone already through Bluetooth or any type of uh, you know, uh, wireless uh, technology. You enter your room, you, you're already checked in basically. The same happens with your checkout, uh, the same happens uh, with afterwards with your, um, you know, travel expensive, fully automated, fully digitalized, automated, what we call customer journeys for this particular requirement. And that's, um, and that's an example maybe of, of these, uh, what's going to happen once you can connect things like the door uh, key, with your smartphone app, with your, you have the uh, IT system of the travel agents connected to the I system of the hotel so that you can exchange the rates, you have the billing system connected. So once you have these connected environments, you can create new experiences, new automations for either in B2B context on this example of a, a travel, uh, of a business trip uh, to Antwerp. Another one very famous example is in the retail segment, Amazon Go, right? Um, we do have a retailers which work with us at the moment because uh, isn't that a, a strange experience? You go into the retail uh, uh, grocery, grocery stores um, and then you put your stuff into the basket and then you, you need to queue to pay, right? In the future, uh, through vision, uh, sensors and uh, cameras and other means it will be fully automated so you go in you put your stuff and you go out and your payment will be done automatically yeah. and so these are it's only possible because you have sensors you have understanding you have to technology and then you create these experiences for the for the users and we have many of these in the business segment as well um, let me take an example of uh, Nespresso machines. Probably most of you know Nespresso machines. They also have not only in the consumer side, but they also have Nespresso machines in the business segment. These are these, we call them patches. Yeah, they, are these, uh, they are different to the capsules you use as a consumer. They are very uh, different systems. And um, for example, what we do with Nespresso is that we completely automate the supply of coffee 
uh, uh, patches to the uh, customers. We do that in, in so we, we understand the co coffee uh, consumption and which type of uh, uh, flavor is consumed by when, and then we anticipate the, the next delivery, and it's all done automatically. In the, uh, before we uh, connected these machines and analyzed the behavior and the understanding of the consumption, it was done manually, so that someone in the office had to call in Nespresso saying, hey, please ship over this and this coffee uh, tomorrow. And then you got actually a, a, a letter with your invoice and then you got, uh, uh, you know, uh, you had to pay it, etc. So now what they did is they completely automated this journey. So the coffee is delivered, uh, is ordered and delivered automatically. No one has to call anymore Nespresso. And the invoice is done through an integration with their uh, ERP system and uh, is done automatically as well. There is one checkpoint that the, the owner of the logistics there, in, in the, for example in a large enterprise uh, environment, still has to review the invoice and check if it's okay and clicks the button, then the, the, um, the billing is automated. So uh, another example where you had a, a manual siloed manual process which is now fully automated through a connected world, a connected environment. So this is really a mega trend and it's not only in the consumer side with the examples I gave you, it's also very much important in the business side. Actually it's even more important I would claim in the business side especially when you think about supply chains and, uh, and managing productions in a complex environment. And therefore, what is our vision in Software AG as a company, as an entire company, so not only an IoT topic, this is also a topic for our entire portfolio, uh, which we created uh, in, the, uh, in my role as, uh, as a CTO, is that um, we, we are seeing more and more companies who become a truly connected. They're really, uh, you know, creating a fluid flow of data between their employees, the, the machines, their suppliers, their workforce, the, the IT systems, whatever you have in order to, to create these new experiences for your business customers. They are going to connect this, use this data in order to improve the experiences they deliver. So it's really about, um, in this connected world, it's really everything about experiences. It's not anymore about products. It's not anymore about uh, you know uh, a marketing. It's about uh, an experience you deliver through your entire organization. So um, it's a big transformational challenge. A lot of a lot of companies they have to re redevelop the way they're working. You know from. They used to work in, they have sales, they have marketing, they have customer support, they have customer success, they have engineering, all these different functions. In the future they have all to cooperate to create a, a product with the superb customer experience. And that's a, a big challenge, it's a big transformational challenge. Yeah. Many of our clients uh, struggle to do that because um, yeah, it's it's so different point of view that you have to think from the experience and not from a product and not from a sub a component. Really you have to force yourself to always keep in mind which user is using your product and what type of experience you want to deliver to this user. So, and that's really a, a, a massive opportunity. But in addition to the automation there's another very important driver for this connectedness, how I call it, for this connected world. It's the business model transformation. So it's not only the experience you need to create, a new level of experiences and com combine your different organizational uh, silos, but it's also the business model transformation. And that's what we call um, uh, everything as a service. And what, uh, what that basically means is that more and more companies, and you can see that also in your um, uh, in, in, in the consumer side, more and more companies offering uh, uh, subscription services or usage-based pricing models and not anymore selling products to you. 
And that's the same happening in the business segment. We have, for example, DNG Mori, one of the largest machine makers in Germany, um, and they're actually offering uh, usage-based models for their machine. So instead of uh, paying three million upfront, you're paying nothing upfront if you want to use their machine, but you pay according to the consumption. And, and that's uh, just one example. And that's happening in many different uh, businesses at the moment. It's a big, big trend. And of course, what you need for that in order to monitor the consumption and monitor the, the productivity of the machines and so on, you need to connect these machines yeah, and analyze the data. And here our technology comes into the game again. And uh, that's exactly what we're doing then. And, um, uh, and I think the, the uh, let's say the, the this trans this is an, again a transformation. The user experience, creating the right experience, is a big big issue for companies. And the other one is this one: how can you do that? What's the right pricing model? And um, for example, um, in the uh, sort of in the consumer side, um, I uh, I, have, I know these fin fin cars. Uh, they're offering you as a consumer nowadays cars uh, leasing on a on a, a very flexible terms. I think monthly cancelable uh, uh, termination rights on a monthly basis or something like this. Um, I know, for example, there's a lot of startups offering you solar panel at home uh, without upfront. Uh, you just have to sign an agreement: ten years energy. You you pay for energy. They do all the paperwork, they install the solar panels on your roof, they, they actually maintain it, uh, everything. Yeah. So this kind of use, this kind of business models is the, the future and it's, uh, it's happening in the B2B segment and uh, not only just in the B2C segment. But um, as I indicated, um, um, so there are big issues to overcome. I have listed here seven issues what you have to overcome in order to make this work. Improve customer experience and um, uh, introduce new pricing models. And of course, the underlying technology to make that work, and I will, in my final, next slide, the final slide, uh, will show that, is a platform. Without platforms, and I'll tell you exactly why in one, uh, one slide from now, this is not going to happen. So, but uh, what are the typical issues these enterprises face? Um, when you uh, sell your product, it's done. You get your money, maybe you have hardware maintenance or software maintenance, but it's done. But when you offer a service, you're not done. You're responsible for maintaining this machine or product. It's a very different model, selling something or offering it as a service. It's a big, big struggle. It requires actually your whole organization to reshape because you take more responsibilities on. You manage the life cycle of the machine rather than selling it one off. First issue. And that requires a new pro business processes, new organizational structure. Second is the business risk. Yeah. Are you prepared to, you know, like I mentioned, DMG Murray, selling machines for millions of euros? And now they are sort of renting them based on the usage. Are you prepared to take that business risk? How about there's Corona and the factory stops working? Who's paying for the machine? Because you had entered into a usage-based pricing model, no one pays anymore. So are you prepared? What's the, uh, you know, what's the risk add-on in order to make that business model work? Of course, when you think about um, uh, this is a recurring, so-called recurring revenues, very attractive for many companies because you get continuously revenue. But if they stop because of your model, like usage uh, isn't there, you don't get anything. So it's a big business risk uh, which needs uh, a solid, solid understanding and, and, um, and mitigation plans to avoid running into a cash flow issue. Then um, I think it's a bit like the same, the, um, uh, but it's the other side. It's the same coin, this point number three is the same, but it's the other side. It's um, from a revenue perspective, when you sell things for millions of euros, you get revenue in immediately. 
when you now actually introduce a, a subscription-based pricing model or usage-based pricing model, you don't get that upfront revenue immediately. So you actually you, um, distri you have to distribute this revenue over a period of time. Very often companies use three years for that. So they want to generate in three years the same amount of revenue as at one time originally. So that in the fourth year they are cashing in, they are creating more revenue, in the fifth year even more, in the sixth year even more. So the, the, a lot of companies using the three year ter uh, terms there. Uh, but that requires then for you as a, as a company, you are let's say doing 1 billion in revenue. If you move and if you would assume half of your customers move into the new business model, you only do 500 million yeah? and the r remaining 500 is distributed over three years. So it's uh, let's say 150, 160 million. So you do instead of 1 billion, you do 660 million. Can you really communicate that to your shareholders if you're a public company? How do you communicate that? Massive issue. Massive issue. It's possible, a lot of companies doing that. Actually, it's a big, big business trend. Most of the companies are currently doing this transformation, but it requires a very solid plan and good communication to your shareholders and overall stakeholders. Fourth point, um, you know, at the end of the day, I'm, it's easy for me uh, because I'm in the software in the industry since many years and I'm uh, working with software AG. But actually, when you really look at it, most companies sort of becoming software companies. You know the old saying, software is eating the world. Yeah? That's happening at the moment. And that's the difference between Tesla and BMW and the others. They are software companies. And, um, and software companies is different than machinery company. I give you, um, I think I mentioned earlier, Schindler is one of our clients, the elevator company. So they're connecting a million elevators. So when they started to go on the journey, they actually asked themselves, are they actually a mechanical engineering company? So are they building elevators? Or what's their future? And they came to a conclusion that saying no, we don't want to be an elevator company anymore, we want to be a transportation company. And it's a very, a very important strategic shift because first you see yourself as an elevator company, an engineering company doing metal works, so to speak. Now they are seeing themselves, they are transporting people. And actually, in fact, every day, 1.5 billion people are using Schindler elevators or escalators. So now the new strategy for them is, how can they make that journey of their end customers more, uh, you know, uh, the experience better? How can they monetize that? Can they do billboard advertising? That's why you see nowadays in modern elevators, you know, uh, displays with advertisements. You see in modern elevators that they actually in business and in Asia, when you enter a room, the elevator knows already where you want to go. So there's a lot of new experiences created around it. So it's just an example how you, how you need to think when you are a, a, an elevator, a mechanical engineering company, now you see yourself as a, as a software company in the transportation business. It's a big, big shift. It's number four. Number five, hard to find the right talents. Of course, we don't need to talk about that, but that's the, that's the reality in the talent war, and that's why we have university relations, by the way, here as well, and some, some goodies for you, which you can take from Software AG. Yeah? Uh, pens and, and bottles and so on. Uh, but the reality is that, um, especially in this domain, what I mentioned earlier, this hybrid, business understanding and technology understanding is something which is highly under demand. Massive, massive uh, uh, search, especially also on, uh, of course, also software engineering as such. I don't need to tell you that. It's, a, it's, it's enormous pressure. It's very difficult to find people. My colleague um, just came back from India, um, just mentioned that uh, there is so much pressure on India for the Indian software engineering resources, which is unbelievable. It's actually increasing the, 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 the salaries, uh, it's doubling the salaries every year at the moment. That's the pressure we are facing for software engineering. So it is enormous. Um, India as such is also very successful in the software business. 
and also now have uh, more than 50 unicorns. So they also have their own ecosystem of unicorns created, which attracts a lot of software engineers. And then all the uh, US American companies investing, the Chinese are coming over because of regulatory issues in China, Tencent, Alibaba, you know, uh, and so on. So there's enormous pressure on one of the biggest talent spots for software engineering, which is India. We as Software AG, we have um, 1,200 people in India, out of 5,000 people, 1,200 are software engineers in India. So it's a big, big, uh, big uh, hot spot, uh, um, it's a hot spot at the moment, finding the right talents. And then, um, uh, I think I mentioned that several times, you need new organizational setup when you move into that business, um, of a software-driven uh, business with a subscription. And last but not least, um, you know, uh, your sales team is, uh, needs to be new incentivized, clearly, because when you sell machines for a few million and now you, you sell it over a three years period, you have a different proposition. Uh, you cannot say, uh, uh, you know, the, soft, the, the sales guy is getting uh, X percent on the hardware sales commission. You need to find new ways of what is often used is um, total cost of ownership type of uh, calculations. Um, and the salesperson becomes uh, the, the TCO uh, commission then on these uh, sales instead of the, the hardware driven uh, one time. Uh, so the salesperson actually needs to make sure the uh, machine is used for three years, not anymore just selling it. Not only the salesperson, also the other parts of the organization, but also the salesperson need to make sure customer is happy and is not churning away. Yeah. Good, so that is um, basically, uh, these are some examples of the issues you face when you want to turn yourself into a connected company, software driven, uh, with a new business model. But now coming back to the platform. So my last slide is talking about the platform and I'm guess, running out of time as well. Yeah? But um, as I mentioned to you, um, the, the only really possibility to do that as a company, to turn into this new way of working, new business models, is by partnering up. And here what we see is more and more what we call strategic vertical platforms emerging. And I have uh, some examples here working with Sony on the Sony Vision, Vision platform. Uh, Sony is one of the largest uh, vision sensor providers globally. Um, then we're working with uh, uh, Appendorf in uh, the healthcare segment. I mentioned Schindler and, and many others. But the, the, what I wanted to say is that, um, that the, these, these companies becoming uh, platform providers software platform providers, cloud platform providers. And for that they need help. And on the right side of this um, slide, you see the, um, what, what we add to the, typically into this corporation is the, uh, the platform technology, IoT, uh, so Internet of Things or integration or, um, or other capabilities. We add actually the cloud operations globally. We operate even the clouds in China, which is uh, uh, regulatory wise uh, a challenge usually and then uh, we also help them on building the ecosystem but what is most important to be successful on these platforms then is of course the domain specific know-how of these different companies they go to market expertise the credibility they have in the market uh, and then of course the as I mentioned a very uh, um, attractive pricing commercial model to make that work and so my conclusion of my uh, small uh, presentation today is really that um, we are seeing uh, more and more B2B specific vertical platforms emerging uh, which rely actually on a, a partnership between different technology providers, uh, for example also uh, Software AG. Good, so I think that was really my, my presentation. I would like to um, uh, open up for some uh, questions or comments. I hope that was useful, hopefully fitting to your lecture. Yeah? Perfect. Yes, please join me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
gefreut, dass Herr, Herr, Herr Gross hier da war und wir in der Lage waren zu lernen, wie Cumulosity als Plattform funktioniert, wie Cumulosity auch erfolgreich geworden ist. Und ich denke, wir haben viele sehr spannende Diskussionspunkte gesehen, die uns jetzt im weiteren Verlauf ähm, dieses Formats und dieser Lehrveranstaltung helfen, hier entsprechend ähm, weiteres Verständnis aufzubauen und die erklärenden Mechanismen dahinter gut zu illustrieren. Vielen Dank, dass Herr Gross da war. So, this guest lecture today was really interesting for us to see what um, or how the topics of our lecture and the theoretical concepts of digital platforms are applied in a real platform and um, the Cumulosity platform is really interesting for us because it's um, a unique business to business platform with many um, aspects that are not um, yeah, a very uh, frequently on platforms and um, that makes this platform really unique and we are excited to stay in contact with Software AG to um, continue on working um, in the um, platform area but also in other areas and we are excited for what comes next.